Hello everyone, welcome to this video. And in this video, we'll be talking about the uh, identity and access management. So it's a very important topic to uh, discuss about and learn about as well. So um, in this video, we'll be going through uh, the breakdown of identity and access management. So uh, breakdown to uh, identification and then authentication authorization and accounting and also we'll be talking about the goal about of identity and access management and uh, we'll talk a bit about each uh, part of the identity access management like the authentication um, its types also the authorization its types and then also the uh, accounting so let's get started now before starting with this video um, there is a subscription button that will be uh, showing up on the right side uh, corner of this video. If you do like this video and you've learned something today from this and you enjoy the content, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to the video. If not, uh, please give me your feedback on how to make this content uh, better. So let's get started. Now, uh, identity and access management. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, um, you know, it's breaking, it's it's uh, broken down into um, different uh, pieces. So the identification piece, authentication, auth uh, authorization, and accounting. So um, identification is, you know, identifying the person who is accessing the system. So um, I'm an employee, for example, and I want to access into a system. I need to be identified somehow. So the most common uh, used one is username, for example. It does not have to be uh, something, you know, uh, uh, private information. Now, uh, moving on, after you identify a per person, uh, you need to uh, prove this person identity, you know, and verify it. So uh, that comes into multiple types. So authentication types could be uh, based on something that you know. So that could be a password, the most common used, a PIN number, uh, you know, and these these kind of this kind of uh, or this type is vulnerable, so it's subject to an attack. You know, um, or like all of them would be subject to an attack, but it's more vulnerable. You know, uh, for example, a password brute force attack. Uh, another type would be something that you have, so it could be a certificate. It could be a software token installed on your phone where you get, you know, um, um, code on this token, um, uh, or it could be hardware token, uh, you know, it could be access card when you're accessing into a building. Uh, another one is, another type is something that you are, which would be the biometrics. It could be um, facial recognition, you know, fingerprints, which is most common used in the phone to access the phones and also uh, palms, and also it's used in, you know, accessing more secure buildings, you know, where you need to have uh, biometric access. Uh, also, uh, a location is another type. Now, uh, a strong authentication would include uh, something that you know and something that you have. If in case, for example, something that you know, you know, um, was compromised, uh, you still have something uh, you know, that is uh, very more difficult to uh, compromise, which is a, a token code, for example. So it's a combination of, uh, for example, password and um, application installed on your phone, which provide you a token code. You know, uh, this is more, you know, um, you know, uh, more hard to uh, break and, you know, uh, to uh, uh, compromise. So after the authentication would come the authorization part. So now with the uh, authorization part is after you properly authenticate the user, you need to make sure that this specific user get to access to the right resources, you know, um, not get access to something that they're not supposed to access. Now this comes into multiple type, uh, you know, it could be, um, uh, discretionary access control and this one um, you know uh, you would directly own uh, a resource in a file and then you would be giving permissions to uh, other users uh, direct permission to other users you know um, the the mandatory access control is uh, different so it's based on 
clearance level and also based on uh, security labels. So you have an object, you would assign it a security um, a label and you have a person would be assigned, you know, um, clearance level based on your clearance level, you'd be having access to certain objects. You know, that's more like used in the military, for example, the government. Uh, now, another thing is the most common one is the rule based access control. Now, uh, this is centrally uh, administered, you know, uh, it's based on the user role and responsibility. So, for example, um, you are someone who are working in accounting, you know, you would be accessing users, uh, you'd be accessing resources only, uh, you know, accounting people would be able to access. You know, if you're an IT person, you would have access to certain resources. You know, uh, this is like um, the most common, um, you know, uh, authorization um, uh, model. You know, uh, there's also attribute based access control, which involves combination of multiple uh, attributes. So you have a subject who uh, is accessing, for example, you have an object, what is being accessed, you have an action, you know, what subject is uh, attempting to perform, like read, write, comments, and context, uh, contest, uh, which is uh, any other supporting information. So it would be combination of all of those. And the last one is risk-based access control. Um, it's more evaluating the, the, the request you're having, you know, um, location of the user, like context of the request, which could involve location, time, origin of the request, you know, sensitivity of that object you're accessing, history of the user, and many other criteria, you know. Uh, the last two are more, you know, um, complex ones. Uh, now, moving on further to the accounting. So now the user is identified. Uh, the user has been authenticated, uh, you know, uh, authorized. Now you need to keep track of what user is doing. Oh, sorry, which user is doing what and when the user is doing this. So um, you have, uh, so that would involve logging, monitoring, and auditing. So you'd be able to, you know, um, track certain actions into to certain users. You'd be able to detect intrusions, you know, um, malicious, suspicious activity you'd be able to uh, track. It's really useful to have. It's, it's very important if in case there is an attack or a compromise, you'd be able to track that. So it requires a manual, you know, review or dynamic. Now, the goals of the uh, identity and access management is to ensure only authenticated individual can access the system and also make sure that whoever uh, access that system, you know, is only supposed to access to things that they, um, you know, supposed to, you know, and don't have access to things that are resources that they're not supposed to access. Uh, and the last thing is, you know, logging and auditing the authenticated user. So that brings us to the end of this video. Um, I hope you guys like the uh, content of this video and learned something, you know, and had an idea about identity and access management overview. Um, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to the uh, video and uh, like it. And um, thanks you guys, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next videos.